So uh, yeah. this is the, the last talk that's going to close the um, the set of talks for today, um, and it's actually a duet. Okay, so the first person I'm going to introduce is Michael Sharp, or as most of you who might know him as Sharpie. Um, he has been utterly instrumental in setting up, together with Edward Albard, the Nuclear Skills Forum, which is a group of industry and academia who are interested in being part of the nuclear supply chain and nuclear training of people, and basically has grown into this symposium. So without Sharpie, we wouldn't actually have today's symposium. We wouldn't have Scram. So we're very happy to have Michael Sharp. Um, and, uh, but what does he do? He's, uh, he's the national director of the uh, Advanced Manufacturing Growth Center, the AMGC, which is a, a government body whose role is, as the name suggests, grow the advanced manufacturing industry in Australia. Um, sometimes or often through collaborations with uh, industry uh, research. Um, AMGC has, last time I checked, 3,800 member companies. So it's pretty large, represents 200,000 employees. And one of the uh, company members is Elbeck Heavy Machining and Elbeck Cranes. And so today we have Charlie Elbeck, who you guessed it, uh, is the head of uh, Elbeck Heavy Machining and Elbeck Cranes, um, which is a family-owned, very successful, and very fast-growing company who is determined to join the nuclear supply chain. And I'm very interested to hear how they intend to discuss how to do that. So let's welcome both on stage. Great. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, in acknowledging country, can I... Um, say that uh, last week was a pretty special time for me, um, acknowledging the Gadigal people and their elders past, present and emerging. Um, I was able to bring um, some thought leaders to the National Space Industry Hub over at Cicada Innovations. And it was terrific because they were talking about innovation with the space industry around bushfire uh, management. And the Indigenous um, feedback is that, hey, we know a lot about that. So how can we collaborate? And we've heard a lot about collaboration today. And I, I know that's what we, Charlie and I have been doing. Um, but my experience today, too, is to share with you that whenever I bring up the word nuclear, people get very passionate. And hence, they come to blows sometimes. And so, you know, sometimes you just got to be really, <laughs> really careful out there. But it's great to bring people together. Uh, I really want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Edward Olbard for his efforts, and especially for today, to bring this room full of people together. Because just a, about a year and a half ago, we came together at a... Um, uh, the Industry Advisory Network at UNSW, and Ed was talking about nuclear uh, energy. And I rang him and I said, we need to talk. And we went and met just that week. And I said, I've got so much industry out there, and we know that industry needs to collaborate more. Uh, the opportunity for manufacturers in Australia is to um, diversify their business, to look at new opportunities, not just in their traditional market of engineering, but potentially in defence and space. And then this brought about the nuclear conversation. And this is why we're here. But we've then gone on to visit our manufacturers on the factory floor. And one of our recent meetings was with Charlie and uh, at Ilbeck Cranes out at Ingleburn, a great, fantastic new facility, which I'm sure you'll share us a bit about. But fourth generation family business, over 120 years. Um, and your not, father? Not quite. Nearly 100, yeah. over 100 years. Um, but your father transformed the business into the cranes and overhead gantries, which I'm sure you'll share a bit about. Yep. And you've just formed, in the recent years, the Ilbic Heavy Machining. So tell us a bit about the, the generations and the business. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've got one slide. I don't have many slides. There's just one so I can show you where we're at as a business, really. Um, yeah, thank, thanks, thanks, everyone, for listening uh, to me here. There's a little bit left to field for me. You know, I'm, I'm far from a nuclear expert, um, and I often talk in front of 50 tradesmen as opposed to 50 highly educated people. But um, so, yeah, very proud to be part of uh, the Ilbeck family and the Ilbeck business. We've been an engineering business for 115 years. We started 1907 as blacksmiths in, in Perth, and, we're, and we've been in engineering ever since then. Um, not necessarily cranes the whole time, but we, we've been in, we were, a uh, large player in the timber milling industry in Western Australia for many, many uh, decades. Uh, Tom Ilbeck, who was the first generation, he was one of the first people to graduate from the University of Western Australia as an engineer. 
Um, so yeah, we've got a got a good long history of engineering. What's uh, what's got us to where we are as as a, a large player engineering company in Australia is this this left side's been a bit neglected, so I'll get over here a bit. Um, <laughs> the, what's got us to where we are is is my, um, my father, he's, he's third gen, Tom Ilbeck. They've all been Tom Ilbeck. I ended up Charlie Ilbeck, so <laughs> don't know what went wrong there, but something went pear-shaped. Um, he created Ilbeck Cranes, uh, and, and he's grown it to basically dominate the industry, and, and now he owns 75% of the Australian market share of the crane industry. So it's, 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 it's quite prominent. Our competition is, is European companies importing product from China. Um, so we're, we're, we're a hardcore Aussie manufacturing company. So just on that point there, and, and Paul mentioned earlier about infrastructure will be important. And we've seen in the newspapers today about the East Coast base for the nuclear submarine fleet. So it's very topical. But when I first reached out to Charlie and said about the nuclear industry, he said, well, if they're going to have submarines, they're going to need cranes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah, the whole industry is pumping at the moment. The whole industry is booming. It's not just it's not just submarines. It's and um, potential nuclear reactors and the whole conversation around nuclear. You know, since COVID, it's is it hasn't been a better time to be an Australian manufacturer. Uh, there's there's so much drive for Australian made product at the moment. There's so much drive to have things made in Australia. It's it's getting written written written, written into contracts at state level or government levels and in, in large corporation levels like John Holland and CPB and all those big players. So it, it's a great time to be an Australian manufacturer and, and a company like us, which is private, we can invest our capital to where we want to invest it. So we're, we're, we've recently developed our second machine shop in Australia, um, which is, they're both in Sydney, but we're investing in equipment which is which is the biggest there is in the country, we're, and we're investing in new, leading technology. Uh, we last two presentations, or last few presentations, have talked about advanced machining and advanced welding technologies and, and development in those fields. Um, and for us to get ahead as a country and as a collaboration, uh, you know, we need to invest in those technology and invest in new machines and invest in new facilities. So we as, a, we as a company are doing that. We've built our Ilbeck Heavy Machining site. You know, we can handle 300 tonne inside the building with our overheads. You know, we've got horizontal borers like this, which are complete five axis capacity, which you could make parts for, if we ever do make parts for it here, we could make parts for nuclear reactors. Um, and that's just one of many machines we have. You know, we're in previous submarine contracts, we've been in discussions with people about making classified submarine parts, all right? Um, almost let it go. <laughs> but, um, you but know... This is to the point too, Charlie, and we've spoken about, about the skill side. Yeah. So certainly they have massive equipment and terrific facilities. If you get a chance to be in Ingleburn, I'm sure Charlie would be happy to, for you to pop in and see what he's doing there. It's just terrific. But around skills, you know, um, manufacturing in Australia represents 10% of Australia's workforce, so it's significant. Um, there's over 40,000 manufacturing companies right across the country. Um, and Charlie has over 400 employees at various facilities around the country. Um, it was a privilege of mine just recently to give the occasional address at UNSW uh, with Chancellor David Gonski. And the room was full of graduating engineering students from the School of um, Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering. But it was great to see so many women involved. And I said there at the time, I said, we need more of you. And I'm sure, Charlie, as we look around the room, we need more women in nuclear too, right? But you, you're doing some pretty special stuff with your staff. Um, we had Dan Walton here before talking about um, the Australian Workers Union and getting more people upskilled and uh, wages and all the rest. But you're doing some pretty special stuff. Would you like to share about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we're, we're all here talking about a shortage in... Uh, nuclear knowledge and nuclear abilities at the moment, but you know, we're sitting in a room full of uh, you know, highly educated people where the, the process is going to start, but when, when the process does start, it might be 10 years or 30 years, I, I don't know, um, 
when the process starts and we start manufacturing here, we've, we've got to actually manufacture things. So Australia at the moment struggles to get welders, electricians. You know, I'm talking to the guys from Barrow Engineering over here. We, we can't even find an apprentice machinist. All right, so um, probably 50% of Ilbeck cranes and Ilbeck heavy machining is, is workers on visas from overseas. Uh, uh, this year we've probably brought in 50 people alone from around the world, from engineers, all the way through to welders. Uh, it's a big problem. Staff retention is another thing. Um, this is not a market where you want to lose people. Now that, that team there, two, that was a year ago, we're probably 50% larger than that in our machine shop now. Um, and two years before that, there was only three or four of us there. But I've only lost two people in that whole phase in my team, um, which we're proud of. So, so You've actually increased wages in recent times. Yeah. People talk about beating inflation and all that, but you know, we, we value knowledge and skills of our people because it's so hard to come by. All of our staff in our company, which, which is close to 400 people, all of them, even down to the labourers, we, we gave 5 to 25% increases, uh, probably averaging 10 to 15% of, of a salary or, or wage wage rate. You know, even losing a labourer at the moment is bloody tough <laughs> and, and you need them. So, yeah, it's, it's a big problem um, all the way from the top, which is wh where all you people are, then all the way to, I won't say the bottom, but all the way to the, the workshop floor. Um, you know, I don't work in the workshop anymore, I still wear my fluoros. It's, um, yeah, it's relatable for the people and it's good to be on their level as far as I can see. Uh, you want to be a relatable person, that's how you hold on to them. I think it's just a great Australian success story for manufacturing and there's many more out there. Great to have some other leaders here in the room with me. I want to acknowledge Ian Hudson from the Industry Capability Network who from day one has helped us to expand to all, having you all here in the room today with, with Ed and myself. Um, but we've got uh, Luke Dukic here from Omnitanker. Uh, it's great to have Gary from Rolls-Royce and thanks again for your presentation. But during lockdowns last year, Gary and his colleagues from the UK zoomed in. And uh, we started only uh, a year and a half ago. It was just Luke and a few others. There was only, I think, four of us in the room, Ed. And yet, here we are today. Uh, and it's about collaboration. It's working with companies like Ilbeck uh, to look at their workforce and how can we upskill that workforce to get ready. Because right now, there is a global nuclear industry. And we have laws in this country to prevent us doing more nuclear work, but that shouldn't restrain manufacturers like Charlie getting involved in global supply chains. And so we're seeing more of that. Uh, Omnitanker are a prime example with their chemical road tankers. Have a look at their website. Um, exporting to the United States and Europe uh, and now doing a second project with AMGC around hydrogen storage with their partner Lockheed Martin. So there's great opportunities for manufacturers to upskill workforce, to employ more women and to look at local knowledge and great researchers. I think, Charlie, it's pretty fair to say we're blessed as a country to have some of the greatest research minds in the world right here in Australia and right here in Sydney. But together, we can do so much more. Um, you've got the new facility planned for Henderson in Western Australia? Yeah, so we're continually exp expanding. Uh, we're building a heavy fab shop in Mossvale at the moment, which is quite large, about 6,000 squares for the building. And we're building another heavy machining shop in, in Perth, Western Australia, which is going to have large equipment like this. You know, we're, we're, we, don't, we don't really make a lot of money off the machine shop at this stage. You know, we're investing off passion and drive to succeed. You know, we're a private company. And, uh, Sorry, Charlie, but I just want to say, Ben, just before you leave, thanks for... <laughs> because I want to acknowledge Ben. Yes, thank you. Because last month we had the launch of the Nuclear Skills Forum in South Australia at Adelaide. And Ben was able to come along and talk to our members, as much as Ed has been able to do, to simplify the message. Because we need that message simplified. We're not nuclear scientists. We don't know what our great researchers know, but we know that we can make things. And so thank you, Ben, you can leave now. <laughs> can, I, oh, can I just say, um, people talk about technology. And so I've been very vocal about the technology comes along, right? 15 years ago, there was no such thing as a Tesla motor car. So 15 years, it's not that long. And people say, oh, SMRs are 15 years away. So we need to look at the conversation. But I often tell people, I tell my children, when I was at school, the teacher said, 
um, Michael, you must not use that calculator all the time. You need to know maths. You won't always have a calculator with you everywhere you go. Well, we showed them. <laughs> so technology can come along. So thank you for having us. Thank you, Charlie. Good work.